Hello, I'm David Edler. I'm the engineering manager for the Unbox Cloud dashboard. And today I have the honor to present to you the Unbox Cloud recent release of Welcome 24. There's also a core team that participated in the features, feature development. Uh, what's new in 124? We have a couple of components that have been updated. Uh, we have security updates, uh, mandatory version uh, TLS 1.3. We have some updates to the Unbox management service. Uh, and yeah, very noteworthy, we now support Android 14 images. This means Android 14, uh, like the regular version, but also Android Automotive is available in Android 14. And a couple of other features. One thing I want to highlight is this one, that Unbox Cloud now supports uh, use of uh, custom fragment shader-based upscaling. This is very interesting for uh, people that use Unbox for streaming. So you can run your yeah, Android applications in the cloud and then stream them back to any device, any device being like a phone or a desktop or a tablet, something like that. But today we want to focus on the dashboard features. Um, those will also be presented soon. Uh, so you can debug a session with the new developer tools on the stream page directly. So it's pretty neat because you can interact with the instance and you can see logs and terminal, interact with terminal at the same, same time. Um, second thing we added was to uh, allow a location selection for the phone. For the virtual phone, you can set the location. Uh, yeah. And then also, a security improvement, HTTPS is mandatory for all connections. No more exceptions to that. Mm, yeah, the image type is auto-detected. This is a quality of life improvement or improved user experience. And one accessibility improvement here. Uh, yeah, we have a skip to content buttons. So if you use keyboard navigation with tab, you can jump right over the menu. But yeah, let's jump right in to the dashboard. A look at the dashboard. So here we have the dashboard. I have it installed and I can log in with my Ubuntu One account. And here we go. We land on the instances page in this uh, installation of Unbox Cloud 1.24. There's already two instances present uh, one called Electric Spider. We, we see it has Android 14, uh, stock Android 14. The other one, Balanced Stuff, it's using Android 14 Automotive. So we can browse the instance. We can see a couple of information about it. Streaming is enabled. It's not shared. You can share basically the instance with uh, someone who doesn't have an account on this uh, installation. Uh, they can join the stream then as well. But this one is not yet shared. You see the network address. It has internet access. Uh, and yeah, let's jump into the stream. This is actually the interesting part of Unbox. Uh, this is an instance running somewhere in the cloud on the server. Uh, has a container. And yeah, here in my browser, I can access the live view of the container of Android. I'm not running anything locally apart from my browser. So it's quite interesting. I can interact with it. It's fluent. It's streaming the video. If you look into settings, we can see about the phone. This is an Unbox device that you probably already saw. That this is Android 14. Um, so yeah, uh, this is all working nicely. So now let's look. What are these developer tools? That's a new thing that we added recently with 124. And if we open them, we see a terminal will pop up, and yeah, we'll hand over to Michele who worked on this as well. Um, he will present to you the terminal features. I'm Michele, an engineer working on Unbox Cloud dashboard, and today. I will show you this shiving new developer tools panel that we have recently added to this page. First, I want to start by explaining why this was added. This panel is here to let you do things on your Android stream and monitor the effect in the tab. For example, to check resource usage or log messages generated by your actions, but also to make you do something in the terminal that will then produce an output on your Android stream. And in the next minutes, we will show you some examples of both pieces. As you can see, uh, it was hard to fit the panel in this page. Uh, it is kind of racing for space with the Android stream. 
Uh, one thing that can make your life easier is that you can resize um, this panel, giving more or less space to the stream or to the dev tools according to your needs. Then, if this is not enough, uh, because for example, you have a very small or low resolution display, you can open the panel in the window with this button, and this will let you achieve more flexible window appearance. Yeah, we are now placing them side by side, which is probably better when we have extremely the portrait orientation. Now, let's see what you can actually do with these developer tools. And let's start from the terminal. Uh, this is basically a bash shell on the Ubuntu instance that hosts Unbox Club. You have access to all the tools of the Ubuntu operating system here. So you can, for example, run a top to monitor resource usage like. So if you're running a resource intensive operation in your Android stream, you'll be able to monitor its impact on CPU and memory here in the terminal. Uh, you can also change the terminal type from here and move to the Android terminal, which gives you shell access to the Android operating system. Um, it's essentially like running the ADB shell on a connected Android device. And from here, we can basically do anything you would be able to do when you have AD access to a real device. So uh, just to show you something that we can trigger from this terminal and has a direct impact on our stream, I will now launch an activity with command. And as you can see, this starts the settings activity. Okay, this was a brief but hopefully interesting introduction to the terminal features of DevTools. Next, my colleague Anusha will show you the logs. Thanks for the introduction, Nikeli. Hi, everyone. My name is Anusha, and I'm a software engineer working on Anbox. Today, I will be walking you through the logs tab which you might have already noticed is part of our very new developer tools. You can switch to this tab when you want to view the logs that are being produced in real time as and when you interact with your Android stream. This can be especially helpful when you want to monitor for errors or warnings and much more. You have two types of logs that you can view. First, logcat which deals with android related logs but you can also switch to the second type syslog that deals with system-wide logs before proceeding any further i'm going to quickly switch back awesome you also have a bunch of other really cool features that you can use to interact with these logs starting with auto scroll now, as the name suggests, this is a very simple yet helpful feature, which is enabled by default. So what it does is, let's say if we scroll up to a specific point in our screen, if any new logs are generated after that point, it automatically scrolls to the bottom to grab your attention. But if you just want to focus on a specific set of messages without the additional scroll, you can just choose to disable auto scroll and achieve that behavior. Next, you have a couple of buttons, pause and clear. When you pause, any new log messages that are generated after that point are not displayed on your screen, but they are stored in a buffer separately. And when you resume, all those log messages are now flushed back to the screen. So to demo this, I'm going to quickly open a couple of applications. Maybe this as well. And we're here now. And if I resume, as you can see, all those messages are now present on your screen. You can also just choose to clear your screen, which erases all the log messages that were generated up until that point. However, any new messages that are generated are displayed normally. As you can see here. Next, you have a really cool filter which helps you adjust the logs level output. For example, if I switch the logs level to error, I will only see log messages that are of the level error and higher, which in this case is fatal. 
If I switch it to verbose, I will see all of messages, including those which are of level debug, info, warning, error, and fatal as well. This can be really helpful as it can help you prioritize what kind of information you want to view. You also have a search bar here, which can help you look for specific log messages in one of two ways. First, you can look for a specific keyword using a simple uh, search. For example, if I want to see messages with the word delete, see it's highlighted here or you can perform a more advanced search by using regular expressions for example if i want to view messages that are uh, that include the word delete or error i can use a regular expression to achieve that and as you can see here we have messages with delete number yeah and error as well you can also just choose to clear the search that you had set Lastly, you can also choose to export your logs if you wish to retain or share this information with others. When you hit export, it essentially downloads a file which contains all the log messages that are visible on your screen. You can download two different files based on the type of log selected. So if you select logcat and hit export, it downloads those logs, but you can also switch to syslog and download those logs as well. Keep in mind that it will only download the messages which are currently visible on the screen. So if you have a specific filter applied, the messages matching that filter will only be downloaded. For example, if I've looked for the word failed and then I hit export, the file will only include the logs messages which include the keyword failed. And the downloaded file name uh, would contain the type of logs that are downloaded along with the timestamp and instance ID, which will help you organize and sort these files with ease. And that's how you use our developer tools. I hope you found this helpful. Now we have Michele again, who will walk us through location selectors. Back to you, Michele. Thanks, Anusha. I will now show you action that we have added to our stream page, which allows you to set the custom location update to your Android device in the cloud. Uh, we click on the Actions menu here, uh, and we choose Set Location. Then, if this is the first time we are using this feature, we need to accept the OpenStreetMap Terms of Service. And this is because we rely on OpenStreetMap to let you choose which location you want to send to your Unbox device. So we accept it. And by the way, you can always revoke it from your profile page here if you want. Uh, otherwise, let's go back to our stream. Here we go. Now we can select a location anywhere in the world. We can search for a city or an address in the search bar. So I'm doing and then search Zonidon and you'll see that uh, I get some matching results. Great. Let's keep the first one. It's just next to Trafalgar Square. Uh, I can see the detail of this location and its coordinates in this box. Uh, let's say in the, that I'm happy with this location and I want to send it. Uh, however, to visualize this happening, uh, we need to open a map application that can show the coordinates of the device in our stream. So I will do that. Perfect. I can now send the location update and you will see that it is immediately uh, received by our Unbox device as shown in our map application. You can move around the map uh, let's go to Hyde Park, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let's send this location. And you can see that it was updated in our device. Now, this is not really a new feature because it was introduced first in our Android automotive streams. But now it is available for all kinds of streams with this slightly different, and different ent entry point. 
So let's open our uh, our automotive stream that we have here so that I can show you the different anchor point. It's just here. You have this heel controls panel that is always open by default for Ambling automotive steels. And you can access the location panel from the main menu. And from here, it's exactly the same as what I have just shown in the other uh, stream. Okay, uh, that's all from us for the Unbox Cloud 124 release. I hope you enjoyed the new features. You can find more information about Unbox Cloud on our website, unboxcloud.edu, and give us feedback on our Discord. Uh, thanks for watching and enjoy the power of Android in the cloud.